Hello and welcome to Chapter 13, Web Services. So what we've been doing so far is we've been using the request response cycle. We've le learned about sockets, we've learned about URL lib, and we've actually learned how to pull HTML and even flat text uh, off the internet. But what we're gonna talk about now is using that same request response cycle to, to retrieve information that is specifically designed for programmatic consumption so that you know, we had to have this beautiful soup, which sort of did a hack job or hard solve the hard problem of parsing HTML. But why not produce data in a format that makes good sense to a program because programs want to talk to each other? If you recall, the whole idea of a socket is to have one application process sending data to another application process. And so if we, if we think about this for a moment and we realize that we have all these prog programs, they could be written in different programming languages and they're all connected. And so they might want to send data back and forth uh, through the network. PHP programs, JavaScript programs, Java programs. And so we have to decide on a protocol that is independent of any programming language. And then we call that the wire protocol because if you were to sort of take some connection and watch the exact characters that go back and forth, that's what you would see if you were monitoring the wire. So that's why we call that the wire protocol. And so the idea is, is that we have to agree on a format that is going to represent the data and we can't make it a, a Python specific format or a Java format. And when we take the data from the internal representation, maybe a Python dictionary, to send it to the wire, we call that act serialization. And that is going from sort of the internal representation to the serial representation or the wire representation. And then here is an example of a person with a name and phone number with using less thans and greater thans. This is an XML example. And then in the far end, in a different programming language, it receives this and then deserializes it and then turns it into some useful structure inside that programming language. And so this is an example of a wire protocol that's using XML, and that's one of the formats we're going to talk about. Another format that we're going to talk about is a format called JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, and it is simpler and easier, but it's not as uh, precise and descriptive as XML is. And so while you'll find that most of the things you run into, especially if you're talking to APIs of one form or another, you'll find that JSON is very common. XML still uh, holds sway in places like documents. So if you look at docx at the end of a Microsoft Word document, docx means that it's an XML version of the representation of a word processing document. So the first thing we'll talk about is XML.